Hello students, um, so far we have been discussing about the, uh, the fundamental properties of the uh, geosynthetics and um, various applications and so on. And from this module on, let us look at um, the practical applications. In particular, in this module, uh, we will study about uh, the design and the construction issues of the reinforced soil retaining walls. A brief outline of uh, this lecture is, um, we will look at the need for the retaining walls and then the different type of retaining walls that we can have and then what is reinforced soil and um, what is a reinforced soil wall and some of the advantages and various um, configurations that we can um, have with this type of uh, construction procedure. Well, let us look at uh, the need for the retaining walls. If we apply a pure compressive stress on the soil, it can um, uh, take as much as you apply, but um, if um, you apply a normal compressive stress uh, with uh, free edge on the, on the sides, then it can deform because of the, uh, because of the Poisson surface and in the process of deformation, it will undergo um, some tensile stresses and uh, shear stresses and uh, unfortunately, although the soil has very high um, compressive strength, it has very limited tensile strength and then the shear strength and uh, because of that reason, it will undergo some failure and uh, we all know that uh, soils can only stand um, uh, in stable condition when they are placed at an angle less than or equal to their angle of repose. So, for example, let us uh, look at um, the case here. Um, let us say that uh, by some means we place a dry sand at a very steep angle like this and once you remove the confinement, this is what happens. The, um, the soil collapses to a more stable configuration and uh, that this particular um, angle we call as the angle of repose and invariably this angle of repose will be equal to the friction angle at very large strains are at constant volume, um, uh, constant volume state. So, we can say that whenever we want to place the soil at an angle steeper than its own angle of repose, we require some lateral support. So, that the lateral spread of the soil is arrested and uh, we give some support and uh, the purpose itself of the retaining walls is to provide lateral support, so that it can uh, stand at a steep angle and one simple example is shown here. Here we have a small um, retaining wall or um, the soil, the dry sand retained at vertical, um, um, vertical angle um, by supporting it with some paper. It is a computer, uh, computer uh, printout paper and um, each uh, tier is about uh, 10 centimeters, that is 100 millimeters. So, these three are um, uh, 10 centimeters each and uh, this one is, is uh, 20 centimeters and one side you see a uh, vertical, um, um, vertical slope whereas on this side uh, you, you have steps, number of steps. We call uh, this as a tiered wall and uh, this particular um, uh, configuration although it is laterally supported by paper, it could take 100 kg's weight without any deformation. A number of um, retaining walls are um, possible using different type of materials and let us look at um, some of these. The uh, simplest one that people have been using for centuries together is the gravity wall. Uh, these gravity walls, they derive their stability based on their uh, mass or the weight that, uh, that they have their own self weight and some of the, um, the materials that we can have is the masonry, um, either um, bricks or uh, stone masonry and so on and the gabion walls. Gabions as we have seen earlier, they are nothing but wire mesh baskets and they can be filled with stones to increase their mass and uh, we can use them for construction of retaining walls and then the crib walls. The crib walls are uh, one uh, simple way of explaining them is 
just imagine used uh, tires and we just lay them horizontal and fill them with soil and that uh, becomes like a crib wall and of course uh, we have number of these um, reinforced concrete retaining walls um, different possibilities are the cantilever wall counterfort wall buttressed wall and so on and um, in case of um, very high uh, retaining walls we also provide a shear key at the bottom so that its lateral stability is improved and then we have the sheet pile walls especially for uh, waterfront structures or um, at locations where we cannot build a retaining wall we can just simply drive some sheet piles uh, that could be either uh, made of plastic high strength plastic or uh, steel channels and so on and then uh, we can um, um, if the um, the soil to be supported is very high we can have anchored sheet pile walls and this anchor itself can be provided in several manners then we have the braced sheet pile walls especially for laying of conduits or pipelines um, just by the roadside we have the sheet pile walls that are driven parallel to each other at very short very close spacing then we put some braces in between to support them and then um, um, and then we can lay the pipelines and after the construction work is over usually these uh, sheet pile walls are removed then we have the diaphragm walls especially for uh, very deep excavations in a highly congested area we can have a diaphragm wall that is um, uh, constructed um, by using the different methods then um, coming to the topic of um, uh, this course um, the reinforced soil retaining walls they have become very popular and in fact all the highways in india are constructed using um, uh, the approach roads are built using reinforced um, soil retaining walls and a small modification of that are these anchored um, reinforced soil walls and then soil nailed walls different types of nails that we can have they are the driven nails screw nails pre stressed nails and um, so on we'll see some examples of these um, as we go along these gravity walls um, which is a very old concept these are easy to construct and can be constructed even in remote areas using uh, low technology and um, and uh, we don't need uh, much of um, skilled manpower to build these because it's basically assembling of masonry units either bricks or um, or stones and so on they can be stacked one on top of the other to retain the soil and uh, because um, these uh, this type of um, walls they derive their entire stability because of the self weight they cannot be used to support soils to very great height and uh, usually we don't prefer uh, using the gravity walls the pure gravity walls to support soils to more than about 2 to 3 meters high beyond that it becomes very difficult because the size of the gravity wall increases tremendously then we have the uh, reinforced concrete um, retaining walls and um, these can be used to moderate heights about 6 to 10 meters or even uh, 12 meters and beyond that height the size of the members increases rapidly and because of that uh, this type of walls they become uneconomical or uh, becomes very difficult to construct them because uh, the size of the members becomes so massive that uh, uh, that it's not possible to construct and then uh, one uh, major disadvantage with both gravity walls and the reinforced concrete walls is that the foundation pressure could be very very high because of the uh, the um, the self weight and um, other um, other features of this uh, this type of retaining walls and so we need um, very expensive uh, foundation treatment invariably depending on the foundation soil if the foundation soil is not capable of taking the pressure supplied then we have to go in for expensive pile foundations uh, to safely transfer the load to a deep stratum where the soil is um, strong enough to carry the loads and another major disadvantage uh, with these reinforced concrete retaining walls is that during the seismic activity when the uh, structures are subjected to large lateral uh, deformations repeated deformations um, we produce lot of inertial forces 
because of the heavy mass and once the inertial force is high then um, they tend to destabilize these walls and um, it is um, is a common knowledge that after every major seismic activity uh, we have number of collapses of the reinforced concrete buildings or reinforced concrete bridges and so on whereas just next to them if you have any reinforced soil retaining walls they stand perfectly well whereas the reinforced concrete um, um, structures they undergo a lot of failures okay. we will see some examples of this basically the failure is because of their rigidity or because of lack of ductility these um, retaining walls they have been in use for um, for um, several centuries or even thousands of years as we have seen earlier even some 3000 years back our ancestors have built very very high uh, structures as uh, temples and um, and other um, type of structures and here we see one uh, example of a retaining wall that was built by a French engineer by name Coyne in um, 1927. The actually conceptually uh, the wall that he has proposed is um, not very different from what we are using now currently using. Uh, what he uh, proposed is that he, he proposed using the precast concrete panels to stabilize the surface soil and these panels they are about one and a half meters to 0.8 meters and they are connected with an anchor rod and then uh, supported with a passive anchor at the um, at the back and um, in order to promote a good passive resistance uh, to some depth uh, behind the behind the facing panels he suggested that uh, that um, should be filled with a stone aggregate and uh, there is always a possibility um, of, for any construction that is uh, built on the soil to settle down because of the uh, because of the compression of the soil and he suggested um, this type of um, arrangement wherein each panel is laid slightly behind um, behind the um, uh, the bottom panel so that in case of any settlement this panel can safely um, come down without damaging this panel and um, after gaining lot of experience uh, with this type of um, walls um, in 1945 um, he suggested that this passive anchor can be removed because after gaining a lot of experience he has seen that uh, these uh, ties themselves uh, they, uh, they are strong enough and they can mobilize um, adequate uh, frictional resistance to keep these uh, front panels in place and uh, then um, this um, you notice that uh, the stone aggregate that he has suggested it has become so ingrained in the civil engineers that even in the present construction we recommend the use of um, highly permeable uh, stone aggregate just behind the retaining walls. And one of the uh, other um, early concepts that is quite significant was proposed by Munster in 1925 in the US and what he suggested is that he suggested the use of timber and wooden um, uh, wooden panels and he suggested that uh, the surface soil can be uh, prevented from erosion by using uh, by using uh, uh, light uh, wooden panels and then inside uh, the soil is supported by um, a system um, that is very similar to uh, ladders that we normally use for climbing the walls and other things. Just imagine that a ladder is placed in the soil horizontally that itself could become like a reinforcing element and the wall that he has suggested is like this in the sectional view it has a front uh, facing vertical facing and number of these ladders that are um, laid um, either horizontally or slightly at an inclination into the, into the soil and um, the arrangement at the front facing is that there is a sliding arrangement and um, he did not recommend connecting the reinforcing elements rigidly to the to the front facing mainly because in case of any settlements if there is a rigid connection at the front facing uh, there could be 
very large um, connection stresses and then um, if one member is trying to settle down whereas the other member wants to stay in position there will be some um, stresses and there could be breakage and uh, so this um, uh, um, wall concept was highly successfully applied but unfortunately uh, the material uh, that is suggested is wood or timber which has only limited life so it is um, it has not become very popular but then this concept itself is uh, very much in vogue and um, now also we use the same concept instead of um, instead of these uh, uh, timber uh, reinforcing elements we use uh, polymeric type or or uh, steel reinforcement uh, meshes and so on and um, so let us now look at the um, reinforced concrete retaining walls and so on and the left hand side we have a masonry gravity retaining wall that derives its entire stability just based on its weight and uh, the advantage that it has is it does not use any steel reinforcement and it is uh, basically um, just arranging um, some stone uh, blocks and other things and if it is built with um, very lightweight uh, material like bricks we need to use uh, some cement mortar to bind all these um, bricks together and if we use uh, um, a heavy mass like uh, stone stone blocks or uh, gabion units we do not need to bind them together on the other hand we have this reinforced concrete retaining walls these are also called as a semi gravity and uh, they depend on their uh, structural action. So all these uh, reinforced concrete elements they are structurally designed so that they can take up the bending stresses and the shear stresses that are applied by the soil and uh, uh, some part of the soil uh, that is resting on the heel portion he also supports the also gives the, um, the necessary uh, support reaction so that the soil does not move laterally and here we see a deep excavation that is um, underway in Chennai and uh, this deep excavation is supported by uh, secant walls uh, secant piles at the bottom this is, um, is actually this is what we call as a diaphragm wall um, but here uh, the diaphragm wall is um, not made continuously but it is made of um, the secant piles that touch each other up to some height uh, the excavation is supported by secant piles and after this uh, the top part is uh, supported by nails and um, the surface itself is uh, protected by, by spray concrete and here you see that uh, um, this is all, these are all uh, these projections are all the steel nails that are driven and um, here we can see the, um, the spray concrete that was placed in um, placed there and here is another example of a deep excavation that is um, supported by uh, some other method that is uh, by using uh, pre-stressed anchors. So actually these anchors are um, um, just uh, steel rods that are driven in and they are anchored in the um, in the soil by means of some cement grout at the back and then as um, after we drive them to the necessary depth uh, we place a uh, we place a, um, a cement um, panel at the front um, so that when we pre-stress this uh, when the when there is lot of um, stress applied on the soil uh, there should be some um, we have distributing this compression over a very large area and uh, so this is what we do we um, here you see uh, this rod is attached to this um, to this concrete panel and then several of them could be connected by means of some steel members and here you see a pre-stressing force that is applied um, on the on this uh, nail and the purpose is once you apply the pre-stress the entire soil is kept in compression and we know that the soil is very strong in compression and in the process of um, in the during the service life because of the self weight of the soil it tries to apply some lateral force um, to deform the soil but then this uh, pre-stressing force will counteract it and keep the soil in stable position.
Well, now let us look at uh, the, uh, the principle of the reinforced soil itself. This we have uh, discussed a few classes back, a few lectures back. Now let us uh, briefly look at them. Uh, this is uh, just imagine that uh, this is an unreinforced soil and it is supported by some confining pressure and when we apply some vertical stress or the deviator stress, it starts deforming. Once we apply um, uh, the pressure greater than its, um, its capacity, it starts deforming and um, if you take the same soil and um, but reinforce it internally by, by some means by putting in some reinforcement layers, the soil becomes more stable and we can apply very large stress much more than what we had applied on the unreinforced soil without uh, failing the soil or deforming the soil too much. This is what happens like here the stress that we can apply is much higher and then the deformation that we get would be also much smaller. And here we see an example of an unreinforced soil under triaxial compression it has developed some stress and then a reinforced soil which developed much higher stress and um, sorry and uh, the stiffness is also is also higher um, for the reinforced soil and uh, the example is um, shown here is actually these are uh, the two soil pyramids that we had seen earlier on the unreinforced soil when a student stood just immediately the, the unreinforced soil has uh, given way and um, it has failed whereas the reinforced soil it is able to take the load without any lateral deformations. So that um, shows that the uh, interaction between the reinforcement that we place inside the soil and the soil is um, um, the synergetic combination of these two materials produces a composite that we call as the reinforced soil that is able to take the load that is applied on the, on, on the soil and we can use this concept for constructing a different type of uh, soil structures like the retaining walls or embankments or pavements and so on. Well now let us look at um, the reinforced soil and once again we have a vertical facing and then uh, to uh, support the soil and to transfer the load we have um, different uh, mechanisms and um, in all these reinforced soils we have number of layers of um, reinforcement that is laid horizontally and um, the length of these reinforcement layers and then the vertical spacing is actually that comes out of the design depending on the type of um, uh, foundation soil that we have and the type of the, the backfill that we need to support and then the type of the loading that we apply the length of the reinforcement and then the vertical spacing goes on changing and then the front face um, in order to prevent the erosion of soil either because of wind or water we need to confine it by some means and um, there are different concepts originally when uh, Henry Vidal started it he suggested uh, uh, the steel uh, the steel panels now we use only reinforced uh, concrete panels or modular blocks and even these panels the maximum thickness is only 180 millimeters we do not uh, use anything uh, more than that and these walls because they are highly flexible they can tolerate any amount of deformation and there is no foundation as such and there is only some leveling pad this is not a, this is not to be confused with the foundation that we provide on the uh, below the uh, below the normal uh, retaining walls this we call as a leveling pad this is usually 150 mm thick and the width could be anywhere from 300 to 400 mm depending on the type of the, the panels that we use either panels or modular blocks and so on and uh, this is uh, just a plain concrete PCC without any reinforcement and um, they are called as leveling pad because mainly they are uh, laid to uh, maintain the levels for uh, for construction so that it becomes easy like once you um, take the levels at um, along the length of the road or along the length of the wall and uh, length of the retaining wall 
it becomes easy for people to go on placing the blocks and construct the wall. Then we have of course the foundation soil and then the backfill soil and um, the main component of these uh, retaining walls, these uh, reinforced soil retaining walls are these horizontal uh, layers of soil and um, even without the front facing this soil can remain st in stable condition but then uh, the soil is subject to erosion because of wind and water and to prevent this, um, and these erosive forces we need to provide some confinement. And uh, this was the original um, Henry Vidal's uh, uh, proposal that we have seen earlier and um, what he suggested is that um, for the soil reinforcement he suggested uh, using um, um, steel strips which are about 50 mm to 60 mm wide and thickness is hardly about uh, 5 to 7 millimeters thick and then the front uh, facing is made up of steel membranes is actually slightly curved so that they have good um, aesthetic finish and this was the original uh, proposal uh, that was given by Henry Vidal in his uh, patent application he has taken out a patent in the name of reinforced earth and in fact uh, we should not use the term reinforced earth because it infringes the patent, um, uh, patent rights of the company called reinforced earth and so we call it as reinforced soil. Different types of um, reinforced um, soil walls that are uh, conventionally used are like this. We can use a uh, full height panel wall and usually uh, when the, um, the soil height to be retained is very small say of the order of about uh, say 3 to 4 meters and maximum 5 meters we can have a, a single panel that is uh, cast at the site and, um, and then supported um, by some means externally during the construction we can have uh, this type of um, uh, full height panels but uh, we normally do not prefer because handling such a large size panel is become um, it is very difficult and we have the segmental panel walls each panel height is about 1 meter to 1 and a half meters and the thickness is um, in uh, some companies use very thin uh, facing panels about 140 mm and some companies use um, is 180 mm and uh, so on and um, these panels whether it is full height panel wall or the segmental panel wall um, they are connected to reinforcement layers so that there is a there is a, um, these panels are prevented from lateral uh, deformations and we have these modular uh, block walls wherein each of these um, is a very small um, block the segmental panel wall each of these uh, panel units could weigh as much as 1 ton 1 to 1 1.5 tons so we require a small crane to handle um, uh, these panels whereas the full height panel wall depending on the and the height of the wall um, the weight could be very high modular blocks these are very small in size and each of them they uh, they may have they may have weight of about 25 to 30 kg or maximum 35 kg and these can be easily handled by by individual people and they will have a small shear lock um, so that uh, when these uh, blocks are placed one on top of the other it is easy for uh, placing the upper block because um, we just try to align the shear lock and, um, and also we get a small batter about 3 degrees batter um, backwards uh, batter uh, for uh, aesthetic appearance and for stability and we can also have um, what is known as a wrap around facing and usually when we have uh, geotextiles we can just nicely wrap them around at the front facing and uh, fill this um, uh, fill the ba back side with soil and we get uh, facing uh, which is uh, known as a wrap around facing and usually uh, we do not leave them like this because um, a geotextile this uh, being a textile um, it is subject to vandalism anybody can come with a knife and just simply cut the uh, cut the geotextile and then you can imagine what will happen to the uh, to the structure and um, so although it is uh, given as a wrap around uh, the front side 
um, is usually protected with rigid material like a spray concrete or a detached retaining wall that is made of module blocks or um, panels and so on. Actually, it is very interesting to look at the chronology of the reinforced soil walls. In the year 1963, uh, the reinforced earth was patented by Henry Vidal and it took almost 5 years uh, for the company to convince the, uh, the government to um, employ this, um, uh, this technology for actual construction and the first major reinforced that structure was built in France using steel strips which are 50 mm wide and about 6 millimeters thick and uh, 1970 uh, the first uh, geosynthetic wall using polyester straps in France once again in France. Most of the early walls uh, that were uh, built were in France because uh, that is where most of the major uh, developmental uh, work started. And um, then 1971, uh, the geotextile uh, wraparound wall was built once again in France and um, it took almost 6 years for the technology to, I am um, sorry, almost 11 years for the technology to spread to the US and in 1974, uh, the first reinforced death wall was built in the US and uh, 1980, the Tensar company, uh, they have um, come out with polypropylene and polyethylene um, uh, geogrids which are uh, stretched, uh, stre uh, the stretched type this is uh, this was in the UK and in 1981 uh, these uh, geogrids were used for constructing of the construction of a retaining wall that is once again in UK and in 1985 the polyester geogrids the woven and knitted type they are um, uh, they are brought out and in 1986 only we had the first reinforced soil retaining wall built in India. This was um, built at Ludhiana and the maximum height of this um, wall was uh, 9 meters and the backfill that was uh, used was a fly ash, a pond ash and in 2006, India has produced the first uh, geogrid that is a polyester uh, geogrid. We use um, very large varieties of uh, materials both polymeric and also uh, the metallic and um, let us look at some of them. Uh, the geosynthetic reinforcements that are uh, commonly in use in the industry, they are uh, geotextiles and then uh, geogrids, polymeric uh, strips and then the grids made of these uh, polymeric strips and then the steel is used in several ways. Uh, the first application of the steel, um, um, the st uh, steel was um, in the form of steel strips and then we have the welded um, steel meshes or welded wire meshes and then uh, we can have the steel strips with anchors and then um, we can have the twisted the steel wire mesh um, that itself can act like a, uh, like a reinforcing element. In 1997, uh, the Federal Highway Administration in the US, they have um, done an extensive survey uh, comparing the costs of a uh, different type of uh, retaining wall systems and they have published this chart and um, in all the, they have published this chart in terms of the height of the wall and the maximum height of the wall um, uh, that is um, the data was collected was up to 12 meters that was in 1997 but in the year 2012, the height of the retaining walls has increased more than 50 meters. Some of these walls are um, as high as 100 meters. So even at a um, small height of 2 meters, the cost of the reinforced the concrete retaining wall is about nearly 450 dollars per square meter. Whereas uh, the MSC that is the mechanically stabilized um, earth wall with um, polymeric uh, reinforcement that is the geosynthetic it is hardly about 225 dollars whereas the metallic um, uh, reinforced wall it uh, costs about uh, 350 which is um, still less than reinforced concrete retaining wall. Even at uh, 
very small height of 2 meters there is a significant reduction in the cost of the these walls. Uh, these costs are given in uh, square meters then as the, uh, the wall height increases the cost of this reinforced concrete retaining walls it increases exponentially mainly because in these uh, reinforced concrete retaining walls as the height increases the bending moment increases as a square of the height and as the bending moment increases the requirement of the steel increases and um, the major cost of any reinforced concrete retaining wall is in the steel whereas in the other um, uh, structures like the reinforced um, sorry the reinforced soil walls uh, the steel quantity that is used is very very little and uh, the cost comparison for crib and bin walls is uh, something like this these uh, crib walls they are not used for very very high um, heights about uh, 5 to 6 meters and uh, we here we see that at um, wall height of about um, nearly 11 to 12 meters the cost of the metallic wall metallic uh, reinforcement and the cost of the the geosynthetic reinforcements they are uh, very close together but at very short heights it is uh, more economical to use uh, polymeric type reinforcement rather than rather than the metallic type reinforcement let's let's look at uh, the major differences between um, the reinforced concrete retaining wall and the reinforced soil walls and uh, for different uh, um, uh, qualities of this um, the behavior let's look at the flexibility the reinforced concrete retaining walls they are rigid by nature because um, they have heavy uh, sections and then heavy reinforcement and because of that they um, their uh, nature of um, behavior is rigid whereas the reinforced soil walls their uh, nature is highly flexible because uh, we use um, uh, very soft reinforcement materials either um, grids or uh, textiles or even the steel that is used it is not used uh, um, in very large quantities and the steel employed is uh, so small that the soil is the predominant um, um, material that is that is in the retaining wall and because of that the entire system is very very flexible then let's look at uh, the tolerance to the settlements or deformations reinforced concrete retaining walls they cannot tolerate uh, large total or differential settlements because once there is settlement there will be some shear stresses developed or bending moments developed and because of that they crack whereas um, the reinforced um, soil retaining walls they can tolerate a large deformations without any distress in fact um, as they deform the reinforcements reinforcement layers they uh, develop or they mobilize um, higher uh, tensile forces and then the wall becomes more stable and all these re uh, reinforced soil retaining walls they are designed so that they can deform a little bit uh, e either during the construction or during the service life to mobilize their tensile forces. Then let us look at uh, the maximum height to which these structures can be built and the reinforced concrete retaining walls their height is limited to some height maybe about 10 meters but beyond that their cost increases and the dimensions of the, the size of the members increases and it becomes very uneconomical are practically impossible to build this type of structures whereas the reinforced soil retaining walls they are easy to build even to very large heights in fact in India itself uh, the walls that were built are nearly 50 meters and now there is a steep slope that is under construction in Sikkim the height is about 110 meters and uh, these uh, can be built without any um, um, without any problems because because of the flexible nature of these um, this materials and then the constructability uh, we require skilled labor for the construction of the reinforced concrete retaining walls because uh, we need to produce concrete in a factory bring it then once it is brought it has to be placed and then uh, vibrated and uh, compacted so that there is a dense dense concrete whereas uh, 
they reinforce the soil retaining walls they we can use unskilled labor because basically we bring some precast elements and assemble them at the site and the pace of the construction that is um, the speed at which we can build up the wall it is um, the reinforced concrete retaining wall the pace is slow because um, we need to cure the concrete at each and every stage we need to cure and we cannot just simply go on constructing the, um, the wall in the height direction whereas the reinforced soil wall um, the pace of construction depends on the speed at which you can bring the backfill soil the faster you bring the faster you can construct because um, uh, the reinforced soil walls they employ only precast elements then they are just uh, simply um, brought to the site and, um, and then assembled and the foundation requirements the reinforced concrete retaining walls their foundation pressures are very high and because of that they require a very strong foundation in the form of very large mats or uh, deep foundations like piles or piers and so on and uh, the reinforced soil walls as such they do not require any foundation they do not require um, um, any foundation at all the seismic response it is um, the reinforced concrete walls they attract very large inertial forces because of their high mass and uh, the reinforced soil walls uh, because they are highly flexible and because their mass is only predominantly soil and some plastics their uh, mass is much lower compared to that of the concrete and because of that the inertial forces are much lower and um, let us look at uh, the major difference between a reinforced concrete retaining wall and the reinforced soil wall is uh, the ability of the reinforced soil walls um, to be adapted we can uh, depending on the site conditions that we have we can um, come out with a very large number of variations in the way we apply the reinforcement whereas in the case of reinforced concrete retaining walls uh, that variation is not possible because the form is very um, is very simple um, or uh, straightforward in the case of reinforced uh, concrete walls and you cannot change it much let us look at uh, these uh, varieties of these um, possibilities the simplest um, um, wall configuration for the reinforced um, soil wall is a straight wall like full, it, we call it as a full height wall with um, some length of reinforcement is actually here have shown equal length and equal spacing but it is not necessary we can have um, variable lengths um, and then um, um, and then variable spacing uh, usually the spacing of the reinforcements reduces as we go um, into the soil with the depth because the lateral pressures are higher at deep depths as compared to the um, into the soil at shallow depths then um, uh, we have a stepped wall is actually um, if we employ this uh, this type of full height wall with um, say equal uh, reinforcement layer and uh, say we have at the bottom we have a weak um, foundation soil the entire structure can settle down and to prevent or to restrict the settlements what we can do is we can increase the length of the reinforcement at the bottom layers so that the, the pressure that is coming from the wall it is distributed over a, over a larger area and uh, so this is actually that is the advantage because uh, the entire thing is assembled at the site and uh, the, the length of the reinforced block we can control and uh, so by increasing the length of the bottom reinforcement layers we can spread the weight of the retaining wall uh, retained soil over a wider area and this is uh, usually used in the case of weak soils and uh, we have what are known as uh, trapeze trapezoidal walls whereas um, in this case the length of the retain, uh, reinforcement layers increases as we go up. This type of um, configuration is used when we have very strong um, foundation soil like for example at a very shallow depth you have rock and um, so there um, the requirement of the reinforcement is uh, very small because um, the foundation soil is so strong but then as you go to the top you may require longer length because if you plot the Rankine failure surface it may be something like this 
and we need uh, some anchorage into the into the stable soil mass that is in the passive uh, passive soil mass so usually we increase the length of the reinforcement as we go up then um, we have a part height wall whereas um, we have um, uh, some height of the soil supported by uh, by soil reinforcement and the other part could be either um, uh, unreinforced or reinforced depending on the slope that we provide then we have um, embedded wall so especially when you are constructing um, retaining walls on both the sides of a narrow road um, um, and uh, with a very high height the length of the, re uh, the reinforcement layers may be so high that uh, the, uh, the reinforcements coming from both the sides they overlap each other this we call as an embedded wall and um, uh, you may think why not we just simply connect uh, this wall to this wall um, that should not be done basically because the reinforcement layers they are designed by considering only the friction that is developed between the soil um, and the reinforcement layers but then when we connect the two walls and because both are independent walls one of them may be settling down more or deforming more because of the variations in the soil the foundation soil or uh, because of the variations in the applied load in that case it is a it will be a disaster because uh, the reinforcement will just simply rupture and uh, that may lead to problems um, in the stability of the retaining wall and because of that we just simply um, embed um, the reinforcement with some um, with some overlap and uh, with some height difference between the uh, between the different uh, reinforcement layers and then uh, there is another possibility is back to back uh, retaining walls that is um, this happens uh, when you are constructing uh, um, approach roads of very um, very large width let us say some uh, 24 meters or 30 meters and the height of some 10 15 meters the reinforcement length is um, um, is not sufficient to cover the entire width this we call as a back to back wall and um, we can also have tiered walls especially when you have very high height of soil to be supported let us say some um, um, height of the soil and it is uh, uh, more easy to construct with some offset at each level um, so that um, we have good aesthetics and um, constructability also becomes easy and in this case uh, we, uh, we build what is known as a tiered wall or a piggy, piggyback wall we construct some height of the retaining wall and we have an offset then we construct another retaining wall we give some offset and we, give, we construct another retaining wall and so on some examples of these tiered walls are shown here so actually this is a two tier wall and you can see this is the bottom wall there is some um, uh, there is some berm um, in this case uh, this is 5 meters and then after this offset uh, this wall is built uh, the bottom wall uh, the height was um, 12 meters whereas the, ten, the, the upper wall is 10 meters total height is uh, 22 meters and the right hand side you see a 44 meter wall and the bottom wall is about 12 meters and the remaining is uh, spread between uh, these three wall, uh, these three tiers and uh, we invariably uh, we can support even the bridge abutments directly on the reinforced soil and one example is uh, shown here is actually this is called as a bridge abutment wall the uh, mm, the soil is um, highly reinforced and directly on top of that we can place the bridge abutment that supports the slab okay so this uh, these uh, various um, configurations can be easily adapted to suit our own uh, requirements uh, based on the foundation conditions and based on the loading conditions just to recap uh, this lecture we have introduced the different type of um, retaining walls we have compared the reinforced soil concept with that of the earlier concepts like the reinforced uh, concrete retaining walls and then we have seen the different configurations uh, how we can adapt the reinforced soil technology to suit our specific site conditions thank you